Hi fellow engineers and today we're going to be looking at uh, actually maths in engineering and the first thing I'm going to have a look at is algebra and Pythagorean theory and what I want to talk about is actually how to calculate Pythagorean theory and actually rearrange the algebraic equation that's used to calculate the, uh, the size of a triangle. Now on screen at the moment I have a page from one of my tutorials of how to make a Geneva wheel, which I'll be covering in another tutorial in the near future. And one of the things that the Geneva wheel uses is a triangle to measure the distance, mm. or sorry, to adjust the distances between the Geneva wheel and pin wheel to get those accurately. So we can actually have the Geneva wheel working as it should as it should actually function. If we get these measurements in, uh, wrong, then we're going to get start getting grinding on the wheel, we're going to start getting friction, and it, the project's not going to work. So one of the things that I'm interested in with this is that I've got to calculate, um, I have to draw a hole here, so I have to calculate the position of where this hole is. And it's all well and good because uh, it's actually quite easy with the current Geneva wheel because we actually look at a look where these two um, this this pin wheel actually intersects the main Geneva wheel and from there we actually create a circle around that based on the center of, of the actual uh, Geneva wheel itself but at some point I've got to separate these two out so the only thing that I'm going to be left with is an actual Tri uh, a triangle as the guide and the radius of the pin wheel. So I have to actually accurately, accurately place this um, this template guide wheel here. And the only way I can do that is via using Pythagorean theory and rearranging some of the the actual qu equation to actually find the correct distance for this uh, this line for for C. So. With this in mind, I'm going to first show you how to rearrange equations and actually rearrange the Pythagorean equation itself. So we have this equation here, a plus b equals c, where c is the actual subject. But I actually want to make a the subject. So I want to, I want to find that, find um, literally what B, what I have to do to B and C to actually produce A. So to do that we've got to remember that if you want to remove an expression that is added to the term you want the term you want um, you have to subtract that, subtract that expression from both sides of the equation. So what that means to rearrange this to make A the subject, we need to remove B from the actual uh, left-hand side of this equation. So the B is actually currently added, so we need to actually subtract B from both sides. So to do that, for our, uh, example, we'll take B. And we will what this will become now is a plus b, so we have to minus b from this side, move this over a bit, and on this side we have to do the same, c minus b. So now what we have is With me. So now what we have is a plus b minus b equals c minus b. And now we can actually use our cancelling out because first of all there's a 
b which is 10 and a minus b here which is minus 10. So remember these are separate numbers. Well 10 plus minus 10, well that's 0. So these actually cancel each other out. And the same with the b. There we go. So that goes now. So we can get rid of the plus. So now we've got the equation of a equals, let's move this over here, so this is a subject, a equals c minus b. So looking at the Pythagorean theorem, um, we can see a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So if a was a squared was 10 squared and b squared is 10 squared, then the actual result would be, if we use our calculator, so 10 squared plus 10 squared equals 200. And then obviously because these are squared, you actually to find the actual result, find the square root, and then this is 14.142. So I'm just going to round it to two decimal places there. So as I was saying, you find the square root. So if you had 10 squared, let me just show you that. So if we've got 10 squared, which is 100, find the square root of that. You can see it's 10. So we've just gone flipped back and forth there. And the same with 14.14. Uh, if we square that, it's 199.93. It's because we had extra numbers on it, I've rounded it to two decimal places. So you can see that's just slighter, but that, that was 200 is what we had before. Oops, didn't want to do that. So if that was the case, um, if we had 14.14 and we knew A, which is 10 squared, then we can actually work out um, B, this length here. So go back to our calculator and type in 14.14. Remember this was rounded to well, not rounded, we'll actually truncate it to two decimal places. So our result will be slightly off. So minus square of 10. That didn't quite didn't work. Sorry. So 10 squared was, remember rightly, was 100. Come on. That's it. 10 squared was 100. 14.14, convert that back, minus 100 equals 99. And then if we found the square root of that, it's 9.99, which is our 10 here. So we can actually see that this, this equation actually works here. So with rearranging, rearranging the equations, we can actually, um, find the result for both sides and this is going to be essential when we're doing our Geneva well because we will be minusing circumferences of circles sorry uh, radius of the circle from the actual uh, hypotenuse to actually drill the correct hole on our piece on our, our piece of work and I'll show you that in the actual uh, the tutorial itself